Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to another video. Welcome to a PSA submission. Hooray! It's finally time again. <laughs> we have 27 cards today. Uh, I'm not gonna stop on every single card and go into details about the conditions, uh, except for a few that I think I need to talk about. So stay tuned for those. There are a couple of really spicy cards in here. But yeah, 27 cards. I started with like 70 plus cards, then I came down to around 50. And now I ended up with 27 that I will be setting off. So first we have a Chikorita non-holo from uh, Rage with Broken Heavens, I think it's a Japanese set. Really like the artwork, you can see Fennekin. Uh, there's like another artwork in a future X and Y set that uh, features the two together, like running next to each other side by side. So it's like a continuation, it kind of tells a story. Yeah, I really like that. Then we have a Cyndaquil non-holo from Blue Shock. One of my all-time favorite Cyndaquil cards or Cyndaquil uh, yeah, illustrations. Komi artwork, beautiful, beautiful card. Hoping for 10s on these. Uh, if not, uh, would be a big old L. Then we have a Psyduck illustrated by Himeno. Cute card, really like it. This is from a deck. Next up, we have Cyndaquil non-holo, another Cyndaquil. This is from the Arceus movie random pack mini set. I really like this set. There are a lot of really cool cards, they're all exclusive Japanese cards, uh, all very affordable. If you're looking for some interesting cards to add to your collection, I think these are pretty neat. Um, they're affordable because they are quite niche, but I really like these. Then we have Pikachu non holo from, uh, I think, uh, the Rampardos, the attacker deck. We actually opened this on the live stream a while ago now, I'm sending one off. Yeah, quite like it. Uh, now we're getting into some shiny cards. So we have the uh, 25th anniversary Pikachu Full Art Reverse Holo. Uh, similar to the Cyndaquil I showed earlier, uh, these are really affordable, but just really damn good looking cards. Like these are so bloody damn cool. The Japanese Reverse Holo pattern for the 25th anniversary set is so good. I really like it. Um, this one's interesting. If you look, maybe we can show it in the middle. Like the hollow layers are like misaligned. I don't know if we can like get it to show. Yeah, you can kind of see it down here. You see how like the square in the middle is like all crooked. And it's like the hollow layers are misaligned. So it's almost, oh, you can see it really well here now. It's almost like an error. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Then we have a Pikachu full art. Uh, people have seen this artwork before in Japanese. It actually comes from the Star Deck 100 and is a secret rare that is actually pretty damn hard to get. Uh, in Japanese, this card is very hard to pull. Um, so yeah, excited to get this one graded. Then we have the Pikachu AR from the V-Star Universe God Pack that we opened on the channel. Good times, good times, yeah. Um, hoping for the 10, obviously, but uh, it's just like ever so slightly OC, but just barely. Uh, so it could get a nine, but we'll see how it goes. We oh, yeah, fantastic card, obviously. Uh, speaking of fantastic cards, ooh, <laughs> Precious Collector Pikachu. I finally caved and opened my Precious Collector box. It was like bothering me having it sealed there, not knowing what the condition of the card inside was, so I... Cracked it a while ago, finally getting it graded. Oh, yeah, fantastic card. Like the AR um, Pikachu we, we just saw though, it's also like ever so slightly OC, um, left to right. And it's got like a little bit of silvering on the edges. I don't, know if, I don't know if it's gonna show or not, but I think a lot of these have that. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm a little worried that PSA Japan will be like ultra strict, but uh, I guess we'll find out. But yeah, fantastic card. And even in an iron, you know, this is a personal collection card. So it wouldn't be the end of the world if it got an iron. All right, here's one of the bigger cards in this submission. It's a black and white Pikachu promo. Man, is this a, this card is so cool. Like, I love this early black and white holo pattern. And this is actually a pretty damn expensive card. I bought it a couple of months ago. I found a fantastic deal on the sealed product that this comes in. Unbelievable deal. Like, I couldn't believe it when I found it. Like, someone just didn't know what they were selling, I think. Because, um, you know, those sealed boxes are, first of all, very hard to find, almost impossible to find. And the ones that are listed online are like ridiculously overpriced. But yeah, I got a really good deal and uh, hoping for a good grade on this one. Um, they all have print lines, by the way, like all these black and white hollows that have this like popcorn hollow pattern. They all have print lines. And uh, I hope PSA isn't going to be too strict on this print line. I, I watched Pokemon Steven get this one back in a tent just recently. And I checked like the pictures of his of his Pikachu on, on, on you know the PSA homepage, and it had print lines too. You know? So hopefully uh, I don't get wrecked. But yeah, man, this is a this is an epic card, not one you see every day. And as usual, you know, with my PSA submissions, I like to submit cards people don't see all the time. Um, at least some of them, you know, not all of them, but I like to have like a nice 
nice variety of cards. I think it's always fun to watch, like more entertaining, you know, to see like a big variety of cards. Anyways, uh, we've got a Gear Ninja Cracked Ice Hollow promo. Actually, we have two. Uh, this was a convenience store release campaign, Lawson convenience store. Really nice card. I have a few more of these sealed. I kind of picked the two best centered and cleanest looking ones. Um, you know, got them out of the sealed blister pack and, you know, sending them off now. Then we have a Mewtwo EX. It's just a regular EX. Um, I think this is also Blue Shock, if I'm not mistaken. And this one's actually interesting because it is unlimited. Now, if you know anything about Japanese cards, you might know that for a lot of Japanese sets, unlimited cards are actually a lot rarer than first edition cards. For some sets, it's like even. Um, but for this set in particular, I checked the PSA 10 population. The first edition version of this card, there was like over 100, uh, it's like 120 or something plus PSA 10s. And only like eight PSA 10s in unlimited. So this one being unlimited, um, you know, normally the first edition step would be down here. It's actually pretty damn rare. <laughs> I bought a few of these off a card shop a few months ago or maybe like half a year ago. And like a couple just happened to be unlimited. So I got kind of lucky, I guess. Um, yeah, hoping for a 10, obviously, because it would be a pretty low pop 10. I don't know if it would be worth more than the first edition ones. Probably not, but just kind of fun to have. Uh, it's very clean, has no whitening, but it, the bottom is a little bit thicker than the top. So we'll see how it goes. Then we have a Giratina Hollow from the 11th movie promo set. Man, this little mini, you know, promo set binder thingy. The cards are just so good. <laughs> These cards just look outstanding. Let me see if I can get the light a little bit. Uh, doesn't really change much, but yeah. These cards are just beautiful. I uh, really like the Giratina, great card. Then I also have from the same set, I have a Piplup. Uh, really, really like this one. One of my favorite cards in this submission, actually. Uh, you know, the artwork is okay. I like Piplup, it's good enough, but uh, has two swirls, one right here and then one right here. It's like a double swirl. Uh, yeah, double swirl Piplup, kind of fire. Uh, these are beautiful cards. Then we have from the same set as the Cyndaquil earlier, we have a hollow, we have the spiky-eared Pichu. Six hollows in this set, three Arceus and three Pichus. Um, yeah, beautiful hollow pattern on these, uh, just great cards. This is like my favorite hollow of the whole set because of the colors. I like the yellow against the blue, the moon in the background. Really nice card, it's a little OC left to right, uh, but still, uh, we'll see how it goes. Hoping for the 10, great card. All right, something very different. We have a German base set first edition card. Uh, <laughs> um, this is sort of a trial run or a test run. I'm submitting this one to PSA Japan to see how they grade German first edition cards in Japan, I guess. I mean, it's it's a sample size of one card, so <laughs> whatever findings I have won't mean much at all. But still, it might give me an, a little bit of an idea because I have a lot more German first edition base set cards. I'm just sending one, see how it goes. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping for the nine on this card. Next up, we have a Moltres Reverse Hollow. Uh, you can see like the shine on the card right there. Beautiful card. This is from a Rayquaza and Charizard deck. Very uh, modern, recent card. Uh, so it's really not an expensive card at all. But I'm submitting it because I love this artwork. This Moltres just looks fantastic. Uh, it's illustrated by Shinji Kanda, the same person who did. Um, you know, the Giratina alt art, the Magikarp AR. Yeah, this Voltres from the same person. I always wondered like, man, I'm so curious to know what like the full extension of this art looks like because you can see in the background, there's like palm trees. So imagine like the full art of this card, probably look crazy, but yeah, um, still like beautiful cards, I'm submitting it. Alrighty, then we have 20th anniversary, uh, Imakuni trainer from the, uh, from like the starter deck. Um, yeah, it's just a non holo trainer, but I like Imakuni, it's kind of quirky. <laughs> there aren't that many cards, uh, Pokemon cards that feature actual people. So I kind of like this one. And you know, Imakuni is quite popular in Japan, so I think it's a really good card to grade. And yeah, I've got this myself in 2016, and it's in like really good condition, so hoping for the 10. Then we have maybe the most expensive card in this submission. Uh, it's going to be this one or the Pikachu black and white promo we saw earlier. It's a Bridget Full Art, uh, first edition, Blue Shock. Crazy, crazy card. In PSA 10, this is like one and a half, two thousand dollars $2,000, I think, something crazy like that. Um, I pulled it myself, which was kind of wild. Uh, quite recently, there's a, it's a crazy backstory to how I got this card packed fresh a few months ago, or like half a year ago now. Uh, I spent 10 bucks like two years ago to do that. 
might be worthy of a video in the future. Either way, cool card. It's not going to get a 10. Um, it's a little hard to see. It's a little dark, but yeah, this shows it a little bit better, I think. Left to right, top, bottom, centering is pretty off. It also has a bit of a rough cut on the back. It, this is probably not going to show, but there's like, you know, a couple, couple white nicks on the edge there. Just a rough cut. I mean, this is pack fresh. So like, uh, I'm hoping for the nine. It might get the eight. We'll see how it goes. But either way, this card will essentially pay for the whole submission or almost the whole submission, I think. Um, either way, it's a great card to get graded uh, to do that because I don't collect full art trainers, if you know my channel. So I will sell this card and it's just nice to, you know, pay for most or if not all of the grading fees. Nice looking card though. Like I gotta say, like I like the artwork, the texture is really nice. Um, yeah, you can see right there. I mean, this is a really good looking card. Alrighty, then we have the card that will probably get the lowest grade in this submission, unless I missed it then somewhere. <laughs> but it's a CD Promo Charizard. I don't have to explain this card. Awesome swirl on my example right here. Um, but yeah, this card has, uh, you know, definitely has some hollow scratches. The back actually is pretty clean, like no whitening, some minor, minor issues on the back. But the biggest issues are the surface scratches on the front or the hollow scratches. It's kind of funny though, because usually, if there are scratches on the hollow, the back looks way worse. But for this card, it's like the opposite, which is kind of weird. Like usually you don't see that, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm predicting a six or a seven, hoping for the seven. But yeah, still like a really nice card. Pretty iconic. Then we have a base set, Charizard 1996. <laughs> Yeah, this is, a, this, is a, this is a cool card. I mean, obviously it's a freaking base jet Charizard. Uh, it's like a half swirl down here. Um, this one's gonna be interesting. If you watched my summer pickups video, you will know what I'm talking about. If you haven't watched it yet, go watch the video because this card has something interesting going on. I'm not gonna explain it again in this video. Uh, what I will say, it has like this one scratch up here and a couple of other minor scuffs on the back, but there's no whitening. It's, it's like pretty damn clean on the front from what I could tell. Um, again, unless that one thing that I talked about in that video is something that is there that I can't find, I'm hoping for like an eight. We'll see how it goes. Um, but it might get a seven or something else. If yeah, just watch that video. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we have a 25th anniversary Charizard. I'm setting another one. I mean, again, even though the price of this card has really come down as the population has exploded, I think it's still just such a good card. Iconic, beautiful, absolutely fantastic card. I mean, look at that texture. It's just, it's just a great card. So sending another one, gonna see how it goes. Getting close to the end now. We've got one of these Let's Have Fun Spring Campaign stickers. I got a bunch of these thrown into a Mericari order uh, a while ago and, you know, for free. So <laughs> it's like, oh, nice. And I found out that these can be graded. So I'm sending one off to get graded. I don't know how to pre-grade these. Pretty tough to pre-grade in my opinion. They all have these little white specks. You can see it just, you know, above my fingers down here, all along the edges of the cards. This is just where the cards were like, I guess, attached to the sheet. They all have these. So, you know, we'll see how PSA Japan grades this card. Obviously hoping for a 10, but we'll see how it goes. But yeah, something a little different, kind of cool. Then we have a 2019 Ancient Mew. Uh, yeah, man, cool card. I've graded this one into a PSA 10 in the past, sold it this summer in Switzerland, did really well. So trying again um, with this one, it's a little bit uh, thicker on the right side um, at the bottom in my opinion. But I think, uh, you know, the PS10 I had looked pretty much exactly like this. So I think it can get a 10, we'll see how it goes. All right, we got two cards left, but they are the same cards. Two gold muse from the 25th anniversary. Just a great card, don't have to explain it. Beautiful, beautiful card. One of them has a little something on the edge, something like a nine and a 10. That's uh, what my, guesses for these. But yeah, uh, 27 cards sending off to PSA Japan. Turn times are, well, according to PSA Japan, it's 65 business days, but people have been getting them back in like 30 days. So we'll see how long it will take. Uh, by the time I actually get to upload this video, they might already be back. <laughs> uh, I will try, I will say, by the way, um, with all my previous PSA submissions, let's just, I'm gonna just show a card like, so some eye candy while I talk a little bit more. But yeah, uh, for all my previous PSA submissions, I always check the grades when they were available. Uh, I'll try not do that this time. I'll try not peek early. I'll try and save the surprise for the return video. So we will see the grades for the first time together, which should be quite exciting. I'll try my best. Um, some of these might get upcharged, like potentially this Pikachu. 
and I guess the Bridget could get upcharged. Um, if that happens, you know, PSA sends you an email with a PDF where all the grades are listed and the upcharges are highlighted. And then you have to like approve the upcharges uh, by replying to the email. And if that happens, I probably can't help but see some of the grades, but I'll try my best to not do that. And well, I'm, I also hope that I don't get upcharged, obviously. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. Wish me good luck. Uh, let me know in the comment section below, which card is your favorite card? What was the favorite card you saw today? I'd be curious to know. Uh, but yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave the comment and uh, yeah, hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for that and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. Uh,